Hello, I'm Brett Lane, Tech Support Manager here at Davis Instruments. And I'm Tom Raymond, also of Technical Support. And today we're going to show you how to change out the transmitter board of your Wireless Vantage Pro 2. Uh, if for whatever reason you're having problems with your weather station and tech support uh, deems it necessary to send you a replacement transmitter board, uh, we'll send this to you and you'll have to remove the original transmitter board and replace it with the new one. And it's a little difficult to get the box on and off and that's what, uh, that's what we're going to through, go through today. Tom? So, once you get the, uh, the enclosure with the transmitter in it, the first thing you want to do is, um, I always remove the cone, the rain collector cone, because it's a lot easier to get to the board, the uh, enclosure. And then you shall also should remove the uh, shelter door. When you're removing the door, you want to make sure that you be careful of the solar panel uh, wire in there and just remove that from its terminal. Then, uh, what you'll want to do on the, on the back side of the shelter is a tab that slides in and locks the shelter onto the rain collector base. And that's what you're going to have to pull out to remove the shelter. Before we do that though, you want to make sure that you unplug all the sensor cables and remove the foam in the cable hole. So down here we have the small foam. You need to grab it with your fingers or use some needle nose pliers. Then unplug each of the sensor cables. Once they're removed, you can unlock the box. We'll pull the cables out once we have the box off. You want to be careful of the tabs on the phone, phone jacks when you pull them through the hole. They're, they're, they're breakable. You want to be very careful. So on the back side of the shelter is this locking tab. And I think the easiest way to do it, once you have the rain collector cone off, is to, you'll, you'll get more room that way, is to put the palm of your hand on top of the shelter, curl your fingers under the edge of the top of the tab, and just pull and it'll make a popping sound. Uh, it's a little tight, you're not going to break anything, um, but you're basically pulling out these little locking, locking triangles that are down in the, in the insert there. So once you have that off, the shelter comes off. Okay, take note of how it was, how it was on there, so when you put it back on, you'll, you'll get it back in. Then you want to remove the cables. The easiest way, if you look in the slot where the cables came through, there's a larger opening uh, and a narrower side. On the larger side is where you want to start pulling the phone jacks out. So I'm making sure I have as much large opening as possible by moving the other cables out of the way. There you go. The shelter's off. When you remove the shelter from your ISS, you want to make sure to remove the battery from the transmitter. And you want to also take all four of these switches and move them to the up position. That's going to do two things. Moving the first three switches to the up position will set it to ID number 8, and therefore it won't be active in your system. And also, by putting positions, the switch 4 in the on position, you'll turn on a small green flashing light here that will use up any residual uh, uh, voltage and, and, and electricity in the transmitter board. There's a large capacitor in here. Even though you don't have the solar panel or the battery plugged in, there's a large capacitor that will still power the system for hours and hours and hours. Uh, almost 12 hours in, on some occasions. So, by turning that light on, it'll help discharge that capacitor all that much quicker. But we've also set it to ID number 8 so it shouldn't be active in our system and we won't wind up hearing it on, on accident if it's, if it's still transmitting. Then you want to get your replacement box. I'll let Tom show you how to slide that on. There's the box there. Okay, and now I'll put the box back on. One thing to keep in mind when you're putting it on is there's 
a nice little ridges on the back of the shelter here. These should rest on the black plastic of the rain rain base. That helps you get it aligned. This goes underneath and that helps, helps you get it aligned and have the shelter vertical when you're trying to insert this tab. And you can hear it snap into place there. So when you're locking this on, the main locking mechanism are these tabs sticking out of the shelter. They go into these grooves on the tab, and like this. And that's what's going to lock it on. So in order to align it properly, you get this this oval underneath the black rain collector base and you put these plastic ledges here on top of the black plastic and that gets it resting in the right position. It's important to have this very vertical and aligned or else when you put the tab in it won't it won't snap in place. So you slide the tab down in the hole of the black plastic, lean it up against the shelter, get the shelter tabs in the grooves of it and you slide it in and it locks on. We'll get the cables plugged in and the foam back in. So you just feed the cables through now. Place the foam back in the opening. And then each, um, each cable is, is labeled, so you just find the wind and plug it into the wind slot. The rain will go into the rain. And the tampon cable will go into the first slot labeled tampon. Make sure they all snap in there good. Now you want to check the switches, the dip switches on, on your new transmitter. Uh, they should match what your other one was before you switched them all to 8. Normally they'll be all down, which will be uh, address number 1. And then once you make sure everything's good, the battery's in, then the next step would be to just put the cover uh, back on. Right, so when you, when you take the cover, you want to make sure you plug the solar panel back on. That's important. There's two pins there at the top left. And to get that cover on easily and properly, there's a, there's a raised edge of plastic here, and there's a corresponding raised edge there. If you match those up, you'll be able to fit the teeth of the shelter into the teeth of the door. Uh, the right way. Okay, so if we match that up, then we get the teeth through each other and now we can slide it down. It's very important to slide it down all the way and to hear a click towards the bottom of the shelter. That'll mean you've got it on. Another thing to check once you've slid the door all the way down is the top edge of the door is, uh, is flush and on top of the shelter. Otherwise you don't have the door all the way down and you could get water leaking inside and, and that, uh, that would be bad. And last, you put the rain collector cone on and you're, you're all set to go. The way you put the rain collector cone on, I should have mentioned this when, I'm take, when I was taking it off, there's little feet on the cone that will go inside or on the uh, rain collector base. Uh, you'll place them on the uh, wide end of the base and then as you get it on, you'll then just twist the cone so those feet go to the narrow side. You're all set and back in business.